welcome to Bethan's Kitchen and Garden. Today I'm going to do a plot tour and show you uh, whatever I've got growing in the garden. Uh, and some things you you might see that you haven't seen in my vlogs yet um, because I'm a bit behind with editing. But I wanted to bring this tour out first so that it's at the end of June rather than midway through July. So um, if that all makes sense, let's just get on with the tour. So I was going to start with a nice, you know, panning shot of the garden, but the washing's in the way, so I'll just start up here. Uh, on here, this is a kind of where I'm putting lots of things I'm not sure what to do with. But I bought these acers, these acer plants, uh, trees, uh, just for a bit of colour through the winter, really. And it was originally just going to be these three on the here, looking very, you know nice by themselves and then I thought oh actually I quite like a hosta so I ended up accumulating four hosta well one hosta I already had I ended up accumulating another three then I had this ivy and then I was emptying out a pot and there was these primroses in there which had started to come back into flower so I thought well I might as well pot them up and they can have a little splash of colour and then over here these were um, self-seeded pumpkin plants that were in my garden. So I've potted them on, but I'm not really sure what I'm going to do with them because I've got those three pumpkin plants there, which is kind of all I need. Uh, I'm just kind of keeping these in case I meet someone who wants some pumpkin plants, I guess. And just up from the pumpkin plants, is my uh, half barrel of climbing beans. These are multicolored beans, so there should be purple, yellow, and green in amongst them. And um, if I can show you, there's some flowers there, and there's some actual bean growing there, and another bean down there. So, so far, those have done much better than anything I managed to grow last year because my beans were just dreadful last year. And if I come over to here, these are the Balotti, dwarf Balotti beans, and they are already producing beans as well. So, that is very encouraging. Although, I would have liked the uh, plant to have got a little bit bigger before they started. There's quite a few on there. I can't actually... Yeah, I would have liked the plants to get a bit bigger before they started producing beans, but maybe they'll just produce over and over again. I've got some chives in here. These ones are ready for cutting, and then hopefully those ones will take over a bit. My courgette plant that I had from my neighbour is settling in and doing much better than the one that was there. And then this courgette plant is starting to take off now. We haven't had any courgettes as of yet, but uh, hopefully it's only a matter of time. I put my two lovage plants in here and since I planted them, they have started to get some really nice fresh green growth. I cut a lot of it back. Some of them are a bit brown. I can cut them back now that there's those new um, green leaves there. I've got some dill, but that's looking really sorry for itself because that's um, flowering already. My pea structure. The peas are beginning to climb up. Um, look, overnight there seems to be that weed come in there, look, they get in everywhere, don't they? Uh, there's the three pumpkin plants. One is a hundredweight and two are Musc de Provence, I think. I might be wrong. Oh no, Rouge Vive de Tromp, that's right. Two are, are Rouge Vive de Tromp and one is a hundredweight. And then this is my sort of 
two sisters' bed, I suppose. Well, actually, those are there, aren't they, the squashes? So I suppose this could be a three sisters' bed. But essentially, it's my sweet corn. And I've got my dwarf French beans in amongst them. And this bed is doing really well, actually. The plants are kind of growing at the same size uh, so that nothing is drowned in the other out although the sweet corn has grown quite a lot over the last uh, couple of weeks over here i've got a few of these these are uh, jerusalem artichokes in pots once they get going they will go around the front and in amongst here I've got some blackberries growing there and some new blackberry growth growing up for next year which is really great because that sort of plant has struggled a bit. Well actually all my plants, are blueberry, are blackberry plants have struggled a bit. This one as well, it's got some flowers and some fruit on so it's not doing too bad and uh, more sun sun chokes jerusalem artichokes whichever you call them and then this um this blackberry bush is kind of getting going as well and what's going on with this tree this is it's a prunus so it must be a plum then no plums on there by the look of it and this bed which you will have seen me put in on a previous vlog you can see the raw french beans are really getting going now and the turks turban squash is getting away a bit now too as is this cucumber market more and the other turks turban so that's encouraging because my other squashes are um not doing so well shall we say but if i come back to this bed now where i've got my X frame of uh, runner beans. There's no sign of any beans on here yet, but the 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 gr green is growing. You know, it's got good growth. And then my kale plants are doing well. They uh, there's four Cavallo Nero ones, and then there's the um, curly kale in the middle. This patch here is kind of spare at the moment. I have some leeks. But I'm not sure if I'm going to plant the leeks in there yet. I, I'm leaving it in case I decide to put something else that's quite bulky in there for the time being. And then my celeriac is... Um, well, it's not doing too bad actually. It's got lots of fresh green growth since I planted it into the ground and you can kind of see there is a little bulb of a um, celeriac growing there so hopefully we'll have a couple of celeriac anyway a few of them have not taken so i need to find something to go in there as we come around here i've got my perpetual spinach which does look like it's bolting a bit um which is unusual really and so is the Swiss chard um, the perpetual spinach is usually okay for the whole of the year the chard however does tend to bolt quite a bit um, and then I've put up this, this small sort of frame uh, with the idea that my squashes would climb up over them my butternuts and yuchiki kuri and um, but they are looking very small plants at the moment. I might have planted them out too soon, maybe. Although that is looking better than it did the other day. So hopefully it will start to thrive like those Turks turban over the other bit. This one I think is a sugar pie, American sugar pie one. Uh, I've only got the one of them. Then I believe the this one is a butternut, but again, kind of lost a lot of its leaves and it's down to those two there really to keep the whole plant alive but hopefully it will manage it 
and this one seems to be doing a bit better this is a butternut as well but butternuts do take a while to get going from memory and then over here this is another kale patch with nasturtiums in amongst them for companion planting these are I can't Siberian Borico, what's the variety of those? I've never grown them before, so we'll see how they get on. And then over here is my brassica bed, which I think I planted up about a month ago and it's had really good growth really. Um which one these are broccoli here. And then there's cabbages here, no sign of any thing yet and there's cauliflowers at the back kohlrabi at the front the purple one and then these are romanesco cauliflowers those like green ones and then the um purple sprouting broccoli so that's looking good seems to be doing well and then I've got my pea, my meteor peas here, but they have more or less gone over now. I think I've done all uh, all the picking from here that I'm going to, and I can take that out and use that bed for something else. And up here, my leeks and carrots are doing well. My parsnips in this bed are not doing very well. I interplanted radish and I think the radish overshadowed the parsnips that were there because there's big holes here and there uh, but this one is doing much better this one is the F1 um, Saber I think it was Saber parsnip and this one is the white gem parsnip and even with this bed um, this side I didn't put any radish and you can see the growth is much bigger than this side where I did put the radish so even though the radish was only in for a month it still has affected the growth of those parsnips and then I got more leeks and a different variety of carrots there that one is early nance and the one at the bottom uh, just down there is Amsterdam forcing and then if we come over here still got this nice messy corner there um, I've got another bed of sweet corn and dwarf French beans I didn't intend to do two varieties of sweet corn but um, it just sort of happened really I was sent the seed so you know if you sent the seed you got to plant it didn't you so um so i'll see how that bed does there was garlic in that bed which you will see in my next vlog which i haven't edited yet and these are potatoes for digwell green fingers is single seed potato challenge they, this uh, pot is doing great and these two pots i don't know what happened they just died so uh yes I'm not sure what happened there so I don't think I'm going to win am I with one potato plant maybe there'll be a prize for the runner-up hint 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 Steve hint 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 oh we had some new chickens the other day so um just new rescues so that's why the cat carriers are out because we needed them to rescue the chickens these are my potatoes I haven't taken any potatoes yet I'm not quite sure I think I planted them late so I don't think they're quite ready yet and um, I wouldn't say there's like magnificent growth on them either but that doesn't mean anything really with potatoes sometimes you can have great growth and I've been like oh I'm gonna have a really good harvest and then add three potatoes so um, yeah, I'm not putting much store by that and then if I come around to here I don't think you'll have seen this bed either because this is kind of quite new. Um, well, I, I, I've done it before, but now I've really tidied it up is what I mean. So I've got my sprouts in here. There's 11 sprout plants interplanted with nasturtiums. And then there's leeks. 
and I've got a bit of an experiment on the go here as well because I've got some multi sewn leaks hit this end and then at the top I've got some single sewn leaks so we'll see which ones are the best and then if I come round to here I've got some ochre that's desperate to go in its final pot I mean look at it it's looking dreadful I've got some taberies here and these some of them are ready now that one is ready I'm sure because it's um, that deep pur pur purple colour well raspberryish colour but it looks like a good harvest of taberies along here which is great because the blackberries are not uh, doing so well and then um, you wouldn't have seen it yet but I've got my sunflowers in for Nick's uh, allotments diary sunflower challenge as well I thought I'd pop in and give you a little update on the chickens as well because I mentioned we had new chickens these are the original well there's one in there as well so those are the original four this one here is one of our original rescue hens I want to show you her because she came to us in the same state as I'm going to show you these other ones now um, and actually these are looking much better than they did the other day because uh, their feathers have grown in a week when they came to us they were bald they didn't have any back feathers um, they're running away now I can't get a close-up of them they're not really that, that used to humans I think but I don't know if you can make out that her back is bald there but they are slowly growing their feathers and they will look like Clucky the one I was just showing you very soon um, but you can see from there that the combs you know the, the the red bit on top of their heads is very very pale which means they're not in the best of health and the combs are not standing up either so um, they're all right though they, they they are much more lively than when we first had them they didn't do hardly anything when we first had them and I've just noticed that there's a cheeky little new chicken the other side of the chicken coop so I'll have to go and get her in a minute but yes this is what they should look like and this is what they do look like So I'll update you in a couple of weeks about how the chickens are getting on. Uh, we had eight new chickens, um, which we only wanted six really, but they had more than they could get rid of when my husband went to get them. So of course we ended up with eight, uh, which is absolutely fine. Um, but they, they should hopefully be all right. And we didn't lose any this time. The, when we first had our ones, I wouldn't, our first forage into having chickens were the rescue ones and we had four rescue ones and one of them died the first night because she was just really poorly um, but none of them have this time so that's really good but I'm waffling now so let's get on and have a look at other things that are growing in the garden and just outside the chicken coop are the other um, container of carrots and leeks so these leeks are doing really well now. They really have uh, started to put on some good growth. And the um, the carrots look like they're doing well as well. And then over here is my fig tree, which um, I've never had any figs on before, but there are a couple of figs on here this year. So I'm not really sure what I did differently because I haven't really done much differently. It might just be the cooler weather at the start of the year. And uh, over there is my other fig tree, which hasn't done anything yet. No figs there. But on here, I have got... I don't know if you can see that, but there are about three plums on there, which is the first time I'll ever have had plums from this tree. So the pruning I did last year has really helped and it has kept it 
quite cheaply now because it, it was growing everywhere. So that's uh, that's good as well. In the front garden now, the lemon balm is doing very well in this pot here. And across here, the lemon grass is um, really getting going as well. Haven't harvested anything yet, but I think it's a bit early in the season at the moment. There's some more lemon grass. And um, this is the tea, a tea. The, these are three tea plants that I could make some tea from. And then on here, got some pears growing. I thought this was a plum tree, but it's obviously not. It's a pear tree. If I come around to the big bed here, the tomatoes are growing strong now. They um, I wouldn't say they're shooting along, but they're doing well. They are outdoor tomatoes, so they should do okay. And then on this side, my asparagus I've uh, strung up. And then on this side, I've got, these are asparagus pea. Um, but they give out lovely red flowers, which are, are, are really nice. And they are in amongst the turnips. So hopefully we'll get some asparagus pea off them soon. And then down here are the mustard plants that I've left to harvest for ages and ages. And they are ready now to come out. And I shall put them in a, um, in a bag, a cardboard bag, uh, for... A couple of weeks and then I can harvest the seed from them. Oh, my lettuce is doing really well. I can't actually keep up with it all to be honest. It's um, it's grown really well. I don't know if it's beginning to bolt now because these ones are getting a bit high there but we still got a few weeks worth of lettuce there I think so I better start sowing some more hadn't I? If I uh, come round to here my gherkin plants are not doing very well here at all really they're, um, they're really floundering this one isn't too bad this one has got a bit of some rot there so that's that's no good that's gonna have to come out and similarly this stem is not looking too great either it's looking a bit brown but that one's looking okay so i'm not really sure why they're not doing very well because the dwarf french beans seem to be liking it here they're starting to put on little um little seeds there and then up here is my beetroot and that's growing quite well now. I was a bit worried about it at the start but it seems to have recovered well and similarly the uh, I can't remember what I need uh, Welsh onions they are doing well there and the beetroot in this bed is doing well it's all a bit flopped over because it's really warm and my peas I'm just leaving these now to save the uh, save seed from them so they are almost ready for picking for seed. Uh, probably one or two more weeks, I reckon, because there's still a couple that are very green. And then if I come round to the rhubarb, rhubarb has gone bonkers, absolutely bonkers. But that's not such a bad thing. We have been picking the rhubarb. My black currants. They are almost ready for harvesting as well. There's going to be quite a few this year, I think. They're, uh, yeah, they they are very. They seem to be very happy. Last year, well, they didn't really do much, but it's, I suppose it was the first year. And then I've got some dahlias and some freesias. I think they are there. If we come over here. There's red currants under there. This is definitely the best red currant harvest I have ever had. Really, really. There's loads in there, look. 
I don't know if you can look. I don't know if the camera's uh, picking it up. But there's quite a lot over there, which is great. And I got another bush there. So that's really, really encouraging. And then my gooseberries. These are these are red gooseberries, but I think they're thornless. This bush. And then we've got these red gooseberries, which are just about turning red. So they are not quite ready yet. And then I think this one down here is a green one. But there doesn't seem to be much on here. Well, yeah, there are. I just didn't look. There we are. So, there's a lot of gooseberries there. And finally, there's the, the one in the corner over here. Ah, everything's grown so much I can't get through. Oh, look at this grapevine. It's gone mental. I really need to prune it all back. Otherwise, I'm going to end up with absolutely nothing. And look, this poor gooseberry bush is just full. It's laden with gooseberries. Absolutely laden with gooseberries. But it's been a bit drowned out now by that. Um, here we are. Been a bit drowned out by the grapes. And then my jostaberry bush is beginning to ripen up as well. Here are the strawberries in the containers, along with the raspberries. These are uh, patio raspberries, and they are beginning to get some fruit on them. And these taste really nice. I've looked after them this year. Last year I didn't feed them or anything, but I have fed them this year, and as a result, lots of raspberries come in. And in regards to the strawberries, I've had a fair few big Tupperware tubs of them so far. And uh, they just look like there's more, more to come. They're, um, they've done really well in these tubs this year. I'm, I'm really pleased. I do need to sort out some runners for next year. There's, they're running all over the place. There's runners absolutely everywhere and I do I just want to have six of each variety for next year that's all but I do need to get around to doing it fairly soon there's a nice one there and um, if I remember I I love put some photos of them on there of my harvests of the strawberries now this is just gone bonkers the weeds in here over the last two weeks just gone absolutely bonkers this is uh this is the first this is the second year i think of that blueberry bush and it's looking a bit poor poor really but this blueberry bush is looking really good i don't know how many blueberries we'll end up having off here but at the moment it's shaping up very well yeah, and this blueberry bush, I need to sort out. This is why I kept them in pots for ages, because you can see the raspberries are coming through from the patch up there. I mean, they've even come up in this Camellia sinensis pot here, so I'll have to move that one as well. Um, and here are the raspberries. They've gone bonkers, but no actual sign of raspberries as of yet and finally at the top of the drive is another pot of dwarf french beans which again i've got beans growing at them and over here are some tubs of carrots so they're looking good too They've been growing for a while, so I'll probably harvest some of them soon. I'm in my neighbour's garden now, 
and uh, the broad beans have definitely had it these are coming out and what's going in there are the new potatoes um, that I've had for ages for Erica's uh, little Welsh allotment challenge they'll be going in here once those broad beans have come out then I've got some onions here which I'm really pleased with. These are Elsa Craig or Elisa Craig, I can't remember which way around the L is. Uh, but I'm very, very happy with those. They've uh, they, they've come to a decent size, these ones. I'll, um, I'll show you this one here. They are probably ready for harvesting now, but that is, for me, that is a really good size. And now I've got these ones here which are F1 High Keeper and they haven't done as well as the Elsa Craig ones at all really. Um, I need to sort out this um, garden and some Elsa Craig ones up here which you can see the difference between the ones that I've weeded and haven't weeded because the patch I just showed you is so much better for having been weeded. My peas over here the netting needs to come off now because the peas are actually pushing up against this netting and they're going to damage the peas soon and i think i might even need to hire the uh the structure somehow and then if we come down to here these cabbages the hearts are not hard yet so they're not that one's not ready that one's not ready and this one isn't ready either. I don't know when they're going to be ready. They've been looking ready for ages. And then when you inspect them, no, not ready. Not much going on at all. And there's the little gem lettuce, uh, which probably some of them are ready for harvesting as well. I forgot to mention the spring onions. These are looking really good. These are the best spring onions I have grown to date. Honestly, I've always been a bit disappointed with my spring onions, but these, they look good. This is my neighbour's greenhouse, which you will have seen me plant up some melons and cucumbers in. Uh, but it is now sadly empty. And the reason why it's empty is unfortunately my neighbour has decided to go into a residential home. So... Uh, her grandson is still living there at the moment but he's not planning to live there long term so this might be the last sort of thing I plant in this garden really will be Erica's um, potatoes and that's more because I can't find anywhere to put them in my own garden at the moment and they really need to go in the ground so that's it from me for today I hope you enjoyed this very very long tour there's a lot going on um, I always think I haven't got much in the ground until I do a tour that lasts forever. And then I realise, oh yeah, maybe uh, maybe I have got quite a bit going on after all. But anyway, that is it from me for today. Thank you for watching, liking, commenting and subscribing if you have done so. I really, really appreciate it. It is great. And um, all I can say about the tour today is lovely job.